I'm sorry. All right. Upgrading the guitar you already have. I'm going to use the old Blue Ridge BR-160 here for this. Uh, obviously, one of the things that you can experiment with that's fairly easy to do is your saddle. This uh, white piece of plastic or bone or tusk or whatever yours may be. Uh, if you're not happy with the sound of your guitar or if it has a plastic saddle in it, you know, I'd recommend starting right there because it's easy to take a take that plastic saddle out, put a bone one in. You may have to sand. Well, you will have to sand some on it. Get your accent right as you're doing that. You know, go from plastic to bone. Try that out. Or if you have a bone saddle, maybe try a fossilized bone saddle or uh, go up to a tusk saddle. Try that. That's what I switched. That's what's in this guitar. This is a tusk compensated saddle. I think you can see the compensation in it. I get the light out of it. Uh, I use Tusk in all of my, the three guitars, not all of my guitars, I've got a shitload of them. The three guitars I play mostly, I've uh, been playing this Blue Ridge because of my hand injury and the problems with my hands, but I'm going back to the Martin, uh, one of them, one of the Martins, real soon because these strings are shot. Anyways, uh, the saddle, if you if you go from bone to a tusk saddle and you don't like it, you know, it's real, it's simple, man, to go back, take that tusk out and put the bone, put your old bone saddle back in. But I almost guarantee you, you're going to like that tusk saddle. It seems to me like, uh, you know, whatever the guitar has, if it's got a lot of bass and a lot of mids and a lot of uh, treble, then that tusk saddle only boosts everything up a step, a notch. You know, it just, whatever the guitar has, it just rises that. That's uh, the impression, or the best way I could explain it, the impressions I have on them. I've never went back. And one guy that watches the channel here, several, a lot, a lot of videos ago, I mentioned, you know, upgrading to a tusk saddle. He did. And he threw his bone saddle away. He liked the tusk so well, he threw his bone saddle away. And I said, dude, I you wouldn't have done that, man. I would have at least hang on to it. But um, same thing with the nut. Very same thing with the nut. Now, this is a bone nut in this one. I filed this thing out and beat it down myself. And uh, I really like it. I've never tried a tusk saddle in this guitar. But that's another thing you can do. If you have a plastic nut, try a bone nut in it. Uh, if you have a bone nut, try a tusk nut. You know, and listen to the guitar. It's going to make a major difference. A, a tusk saddle will make a major, major, major difference from a bone one. And a super major difference from a plastic one. Same thing with a nut. Okay? So, that's the two easiest things that you can do. And the quick, quickest. And, uh, like I say, if you don't like them, you can always go back to your old hardware and be right back you know the same sound you had before you switched them okay there's a thing there's a there's a plate called Mitchell's plate mate now I don't know how many of you guys know about this I'll show you some pictures of it well there's what your guitar looks like that's the bridge plate in your guitar the way it should look okay now here's a picture with the uh, the plate mate installed okay see it's just a little brass uh, uh, plate that sets up again your bridge plate. It's got double-sided adhesive tape, sticky tape that holds it on there. The strings hold it on too. But the tape holds it until you get the strings on it. And here is what your bridge saddle will look like over time, long enough period of time, where those ball ends pull up again your, against your uh, uh, bridge plate. You know, so hard. Sometimes the ball will catch on the bottom of the pin. And you're tuning it up and pop, you know, and the string gets real loose. Well, what's happening there is that ball is caught on the end of the bridge pin, okay? Then all of a sudden, it jumps off and bam, up again the, the bridge plate it goes. And, you know, that's terrible for your bridge plate, man. This uh, Mitchell's plate, mate, will protect your bridge plate greatly. And it adds to the sound there again now 
it adds a lot of mids and highs to your acoustic guitar. Uh, it adds a lot of bass. It's it's like the Tusk. It bumps everything up, you know, a notch or a half a notch or whatever. You're going to see a difference in the sound of it if you put one of those Mitchell's plate mates in there. But I, there again, I have them in all three of the guitars that I play mostly. The ones I, the three I play all the time, or alternate between. I have a Tusk saddle in all three of them. I have a plate mate in all three of them, and I'm thinking about going to a tusk nut maybe in all three of them. I haven't really decided yet, but uh, do check out Mitchell's plate mate. Uh, I don't endorse them; I have nothing to do with him. But I would recommend you go to uh, uh, Mitchell'sPlateMate.com and get one if you're going to get it there. You got to get the exact string spacing for your guitar. So find the specs on your guitar. Get the string spacing, cause so you can order the right plate, and don't get it from Stu Max. Stu Max sells them. Mitchell invented the things. He's the guy that, the, and then Stu Max started making them. And those bloodthirsty bastards, we all know. You know, you can well, you can save five or six bucks if you get them from Mitchell. So you know, there you go. Get it from Mitchell. <laughs> Highly recommend. Strings are important. Your guitar was built around a certain gauge string, okay? Now, I've seen people go from a really uh, heavy string to a really light one or a um, really light one to a really heavy one. You should never do that, folks. Your guitar, uh, you know, look at the specs there again. See what, get, what strings are recommended for that guitar and use that gauge of strings and stick with it. Set it up, make it play, with work with that uh, set of that gauge of strings because you know the guitar is designed to have all these strings up to tension creates uh, you know from 120 to 180 200 pounds pull right here on that bridge plate in the bridge and the saddle and the heavier the gauge is you know the more pull it's going to have and like I say your guitar is designed for a specific gauge and you want to stick with that gauge. It's important you do. You can pull a guitar apart by putting too heavy of strings, heavier than it's uh, designed for. Now, I'll show you what I use. Of course, I play the kind of music I play. I like a lot of uh, bass and womb for whatever you want to call it out of the thing. These are Martin MSP 4200s is what these are. They're not coded. Now, they make a Martin MSP... Uh, 7200 I think is the number and they are coded they're not coded as heavy as uh, elixirs are elixirs just do not feel natural to me they feel funky pull offs you can't pull them off very loud uh, I think I read somewhere where elixirs have like 17 microns thick of coating where the, where the MSP 7200s have 3 mic microns so it doesn't affect your tone as much if any, as elixirs do. Now, that, granted, they don't last as long as elixirs, but they last longer than non-coated strings. I don't have a set of them here, but they're MSP 70, 7200s is what I use. That's a 13, 0.013 to 0.056 is what I use. I like a big, fat, heavy string, so that's why I use those. Now, Here's a few more things that uh, requires a little bit more work, a little bit more money, a little more time. You've probably all read about high performance guitars. Well, all of this stuff usually is done to them. The down pressure the strings puts on your saddle, okay? Strings come up out of the holes where the, the bridge pins are over the saddle. That down pressure on your saddle it's very important. The higher the saddle is, the more down pressure you're going to have, obviously, and it moves the top better. It uh, carries that sound better into the top, okay? Same thing goes with the nut up here. The more down pressure these strings have, the more down pressure they have on that nut, you know, they're, you're better off. You're going to have a better sound. So what you can do is replace all of your keys. I'm getting into the light here. I look like Satan with those black eyes. <laughs> what you want to do if you want to really go a, a step farther, get keys with really short, 
pegs on them. Look how sh this guitar, I think that's why these keys have been changed. Because these pegs are really, really short. If you can see that. God, I hope you can see it. And what that does, the shorter peg, if you start the winding on there and wind down towards the peg head here, that puts a lot more pressure down on your nut right here. And in turn gives you a way more more sound. The sound just it's allowed to carry through that instrument better, you know. Obviously you gotta take your saddle down, you know, to get the action down where it's comfortable to play. They're really easy. I like them really easy to play. Now that I'm getting my hands back, I'm playing completely different. But uh I like to just be able to touch those notes now, you know, instead of choke them out, or as Tony Rice says, beat the notes, uh, touch the notes out of your guitar, don't beat them out. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, you gotta, you gotta take some off your saddle to get the action down. I mean, uh, you know, that's just a rule of thumb. But the more you can leave that saddle stick up, the better that guitar is going to sound because that creates more down pressure on the saddle. So that's, uh, you know, another two things, the saddle and the nut and shorting, shortening those pegs. Get a set of keys with really short pegs on them. Wind the string. Look at the, if you can see this, if you can see this high or the low E string, it's wound right down on there. And well, the, the fifth string is too, and the fourth. Well, no, the fourth isn't. Fourth string, this one, is wound wrong. But these two are right. The rest of them look pretty good. But the closer down that you can wind those strings to the pegboard, the more pressure you're going to put on this uh, nut here. And the better it's going to sound. It's going to make it sound a lot better. Okay, another thing you can do at a little bit of expense, whatever kind of bridge pins you have, if they're plastic, try some bone bridge pins in it. It makes all the difference. Uh, try some, uh, some people likes brass bridge pins. You, know, you can go too far with the stuff. If you've got a plate mate and a tusk saddle, and brass bridge pins, you done went way too far. You probably guitar is going to sound really thin, really, uh, it's going to lose a lot of punch. And I like a punchy guitar. I mean, you know, when you, when you jar at it, so you can hear these strings rattling, they're rusted to death. But I like a really punchy guitar, that's why I use such heavy strings. But yeah, bridge pins, man. If you got plastic bridge pins, uh, try bone bridge pins. Or if you have bone bridge pins, try tusk bridge pins. Or maybe try brass ones if you don't have a plate mate installed or a tusk saddle, because I think that would be a bit much. So bridge pins, that's another, another alternative that you can uh, upgrade your guitar, make it sound better. And last but not least, and this is, uh, you wouldn't want to do this unless you're experienced and know exactly how because you can screw up. But you can bring an awful lot more out of an acoustic guitar by shaving the braces, scalloping the braces on the top. Or even on the back if you really want to get crazy with it. But uh, all, the X brace and the voicing bars and tone bars and everything, you can scallop those and shave them down quite a lot and still maintain you know a good deal of the strength it's going to weaken it some you know naturally but my god man what it does to the sound is just incredible one of uh, my Martin guitars the MMV model I have those uh, braces shaved down really thin I scalloped those out myself somebody did a real shitty job on it and I tried to make it look better when I did it Helped it a lot, but uh, just be careful if you do that. I'm telling you to get in there with a file or a knife or a chisel and start uh, cutting away at your braces because you got to just shave those braces, man. Shave them a tiny bit at a time. Don't do it unless you know exactly how to do it. Take it to a luthier or a technician or someone that knows how to do that, exactly how to do it. Someone you can trust. 
and let them do it for you. Send it to me. I know how to do it. I'll do it for you if you want your your, your braces shaved. But that would be a, the, the very last alternative. I wouldn't recommend doing that to every guitar either. You know, if a guitar's got quite a belly on it, you probably wouldn't want to shave the braces in it because it's already pulling up. If it's fairly flat like this one is, see that? How flat that is? Concentrate on the flatness now. If it's uh, flat like that, you could probably safely take uh, some off of the braces and greatly improve the sound. It wouldn't really improve it. It would just there again boost what it already has up a notch or two notches or whatever. But uh, there again, there's uh, a million little things you can do to upgrade the guitar you already have. See, I got you now, man. Uh, but that's a few things there I wanted to do, and uh, I'm sorry it took so long for me to get this video up. Like I said before, it's just been crazy madness here. It's slowing down, finally now. I think after New Year's it'll be normal again, whatever normal is. But yeah, baby, that's some steps you can take to upgrade the guitar that you already have. Uh, don't go too far with it, because like I say, you can, you can, uh, you can go too far. It's really easy to do. When you shave those braces, if you went too far with that, you know, there's no putting that back. You done shave the braces. Yeah, that's a done deal. But like I say, with the keys, with the nut, with the saddle, the strings, all that stuff, you can go back to your old hardware if you don't like that stuff. Even if you put a plate made in and you don't like it, like I said, this double-sided sticky adhesive tape is all that holds that thing on there. And it holds it on there well. Of course, when the strings are on it, they hold it. They pull it up tight again, the bridge plate, and they hold it fine. You can take all six strings off, and it won't fall out. But if you don't like it, it's easy to go back to your, you know, take it off. It's easy to get out. So there's you a few ways to upgrade your guitar that you already have. <laughs> I wanted to talk about this one more time. I haven't done a thing to it yet. But... I never had any takers on this. I figured maybe some, at least one would, you know, want to take me up on it and we'd pass it back and forth between the two of us, if nothing else. So I'm going to give you one more chance on this in this video. If, uh, if you missed a video, any of you guys that do this kind of work, if you missed a video before and you want, maybe you'll see it on this video, if you want to take a chance on passing this thing around, let me know in the comments below here. And I will, uh, I don't know what I'll do to it first, but I'll do something to it and send it to you. Obviously, it's going to cost money. Uh, or maybe you would just have the shit laying around to fix it. I don't have a Floyd Rose laying around, but I'll buy one if we, you know, if that's what I fix. Or I'll do the frets or whatever. Uh, or wire it. I can wire it too. But uh, if anyone wants to do this, man, if not... I'm going to order everything that it needs. Everything. I'm going to do away with those little pots. It's got those little pots in there. I don't like those. I think you can see that. I'm just going to take those out and replace them with better pots. And that's the first thing I'll do. But I'm going to order, if, if you guys are not interested in this, I'm going to order everything that I can think of or see that it needs and do it and keep it. <laughs> Just hang on to it and play it. I think it would look really good with all black hardware against that green. So, yeah, let me know on that. If you're interested, we'll do it. If not, like I say, I'll, I'll just order this stuff and do it myself. And I'll have an electric guitar again. Hold on. Someone was asking me about this picture on the shelf over there. It's the great Bela Fleck and myself obviously a long time ago exchanging phone numbers I got to play his banjo that day the uh, same banjo that he still plays today it's an old Gibson I forget what year 30 something I think but it's the same one that he still plays this day but that's what that was uh, that was a lot of years ago a lot of pounds ago too so uh, yeah man 
Let me know on the green guitar if you guys are interested. Uh, probably the next uh, repair series is going to be on that Fender, uh, what is that thing, Music Master, I think, bass. I'm going to uh, figure out the electronics, see if they work or not. And uh, I can't, I need, if any of you guys have a key for a Fender Music Master bass that you want to sell, contact me on Facebook because I can't find one. I, I can find the whole set. I don't want to buy the whole set. They're expensive. I don't need the whole set. I only need one. So if any of you guys got a bass key that will fit on a, on a Fender Music Master bass and you want to sell it or trade it or whatever you want to do, uh, hit me up on Facebook and need one for that base but it's going to be a next series of uh, repairs I'm probably going to start on that about next and uh, when I get a pick guard cut out for the little Martin that I showed you I'll do a video on that setting that guitar up and putting a pick guard on it so that's a, just a few things to come uh, quick clip a quick clip licks quick clip say it ten times fast do it Quick Clip Licks 3 is coming in January, hopefully. I don't know exactly when in January it'll be, but uh, it'll be in January. Someone asked me to do another updated uh, version of teaching how to pick uh, Tony Rice's version of Church Street Blues. I can do that. I will do it. Uh, there again, I don't know exactly when, but stay tuned and uh, I will, I'll do that. And uh, what else? I'm trying to keep my head in gear here. Anyways, I don't know what else. I'll put it on the next video. I always forget stuff, as you know. But uh, that's a few things coming up on the channel. So keep it here. A lot of good lessons coming. A lot of good repair stuff. I'll show you how to do all kinds of shit, baby. And uh, or the way I do it. Not necessarily show you how. I'll show you the way I do it. And you can uh, <laughs> take the ball and run with it from there. But uh, that's a couple of things coming up. I'd like to thank the new subscribers. I'm not, I'm not getting the traffic like I thought I would be getting it by now. Maybe it's just taking longer because the traffic is going up. It's just oh so slow. <clears throat> but uh, I got a cold again. I seem to keep one, don't I? But uh, yeah, man. Anybody got a base key? Send me that. Uh, quick clips three coming. Base repair coming, uh, little Martin LX1 setup. I'll show you how to set little guitars up in case you don't know. It's the same thing as big ones, pretty much. Show you how to put a pick guard on. And I'll show you uh, what else I'm going to show you. I don't know. Just you have to keep it tuned here to find out. Oh, yeah. I wanted to finish thinking my new subscribers. You guys rock, man. I appreciate it so much. Hang around. We're going to have a lot of fun this winter. Uh, <laughs> the old subscribers probably know what I'm talking about but yeah man keep it here everybody have a great uh, New Year's Eve be careful don't drink and drive you know do one or the other don't do them both know what the one I'm going to do <laughs> so cheers to y'all I'll see you on the next video and it'll be real soon happy new year well there I've done it again I remembered shit uh, a lot of you have asked for a cue ball fix, and I'm sorry I can't, uh, don't have everything we need here to do it. Cue ball's not here. I don't even know where she's at. She's usually here with me, but she ain't here now. So I can't give you no cue ball fix on this video. But you know what that means. The next cue ball fix you do get is going to be twice as good, or three times. Maybe I'll throw a bonus. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate every single one of you. Cheers, and I'll see you soon.